Surging Sparks is finally out and the Pikachu that has come out in the box is officially the highest priced card in the entire Scarlet and Violet era. So is this the era defining card or is it just a flash in the pan? Let's delve into Surging Sparks. Welcome back to the channel guys. Before we start, hit like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on and tell your friends. I appreciate it so much. When we get Pokemon news, I tend to do a YouTube short on it. I look at the good, the bad, what I think is going to happen and the investability of the set. But I decided I also want to do something maybe a week after the set comes out where I go into the pros, the cons, what I would invest in, what I buy now, what I buy later, all the stuff we can think about when it comes to buying the new set. And honestly, we're starting off with an absolute banger. What was apparently going to be this amazing dragon set has ended up being this era defining Pikachu set by the looks of it. The question is, is it actually going to make maintain the level that it's shown so far. Before we get into that, what actually is Surging Sparks? It is the new Pikachu set which has a $600 plus Pikachu card of Raw. And there are some crazy positives for this set. The first one is obviously that Pikachu is a fan favorite and it's garnered such a high price point so far. We also have an amazing Latias secret illustration rare and also an amazing Latios illustration rare. Don't get me started on why they didn't make them both secret illustration rares. That was such a miss from the Pokemon company, but nevertheless, they both are really cool. Along with that, we have just a majestic Milotic card. And then we have the best Terra SIR in Hydreigon. And we have a great trainer here in Jasmine. It's not the most expensive trainer in the set, that goes to Lycia, but this is a trainer which a lot of people have fond memories of. The Amphro story in Gen 2 is something that a lot of us will remember and would have played through in our youth. So overall here we have a really deep pool of amazing looking cards. And look, there are some negatives of course, the first one being the Pikachu's price point at $600 plus. Now yeah, if we're an investor and we buy a box and the card stays at that price, that is great. If it goes up, even better. But I don't think it stays at that price, I think it drops. Does it drop to like sub 200? No. I don't think it ever does that but it's not going to stay at 600 in my opinion and I say this because I don't remember the hype around this set being for Pikachu now it sounds crazy considering the card is over 600 dollars but I remember people thinking this is going to be the new dragon set kind of like Evolving Skies had a lot of dragon Pokemon along with evolutions this was meant to have a lot of dragon Pokemon in people's opinion and then we saw just a handful of dragon Pokemon with Pikachu being the star of the show but to add to that I'm not sure the Pikachu even is that great looking now I know people are going to come for me for saying that but I just don't think it compares to for example the Greninja or the Mew that we've already seen in Scarlet and Violet and if I remember Twilight Masquerade just two days after Greninja came out there was a surge of love for the card I feel like that card actually looked better people actually liked the card more but in this case they just like the fact it's Pikachu more now that's completely fair you can't look past the fact that Pikachu is Pokemon's mascot and it's one of the most popular Pokemon ever yeah it's going to keep the price high but let's look at Vivid Voltage and let's look at Obsidian Flames both of those sets tanked but initially skyrocketed because of their chase card now obviously this card is a much better looking card and is much more expensive than those cards ever were but still you've got to take that into consideration what i think is actually going to happen to this card is similar to what happened to power day and fates charizard it started at about 150 and is dropped to about 100 and it's currently there so i can see this card starting at around 600 then within a few months comes down to 350 to 450 and just stays there for a while now obviously i can't predict numbers but that's just the kind of ballpark if we're looking at history i guess the most important thing from this whole video is is this set investable should we be buying stuff and what should we be buying when 110% this set is a good set to invest in. In fact, it's a great set to invest in. We mentioned five or six cards there which are hugely desirable. At the moment, the majority of them are about $70 plus. But then you've got to ask yourself, does it have the capability to become an elite set? By elite, I mean something closer to Evolving Skies or Evolutions. And that's where I kind of draw the line. Those sets have huge chases. For example, Evolving Skies has multiple cards which exceed $100 that a lot of people would be completely happy opening if they got a pack. It's not just about the Moonbryon. Here, I don't see all these cards sticking at this massively high price. I see the Pikachu sticking at that price. I definitely see the Latia sticking at that price. And I can see the Milotic or Hydreigon sticking in around that $50 to $60 range in the long term. But do they all get $100 plus? I don't think so. So you ask the question, where do I actually put my money? Just because it's not an elite set doesn't mean it's not going to be a very valuable set in the long term. We get wrapped up into this idea that every era is going to have like an era defining set, an evolving skies equivalent. That set was the top 1% of every set that's ever been released. I'm not sure every era is going to have that kind of set. And there might be multiple sets from every era to put your money into. 
This for me at the moment is definitely one of those multiple sets. There are some sets so far which I've looked at and said, yep, it's definitely good to buy sealed here. 151 is an example of that. But then there are sets where I think, right, I think at the moment the best thing to do is to buy singles and maybe grade those singles. So I look at Twilight Masquerade, I'm trying to buy the Greninja single. I look at Powder and Fates, I'm looking at the Mew and Charizard. I look at Powder Evolved, I'm looking at the Magikarp. This set at the moment falls into the former. I actually think it's better to buy a booster box and sealed product of this set. I think there's enough chase there for people to buy an open sealed product. And this set is definitely going to go up over time. So right now, what I would do is I wouldn't buy any singles at all. In my opinion, those cards are going to drop drastically in the next few months, then pick up your singles. But right now, I think it's the best time to buy sealed because I could imagine this being off shelves pretty damn soon. But I want to know what you guys think about Surging Sparks. Let me know down below your favorite card from the set. For me, it's between Latias and Milotic. Those two cards are unbelievable. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe and turn on notifications for everything Pokemon TCG. And until next time, invest in some Surging Sparks.